So welcome back to this uh, second part of this video about the more advanced way to download an asset bundle. So last time I let you with the check asset bundle and the download asset bundle server. So we finish with this function and what we need to do right now. So we need uh, to create three private functions. So basically it will be very easy. So private void and this function will, will be called apply uh, imported so imported uh, sprite from asset bundle so basically this function will be called if we download an asset bundle if it's a sprite so it will take in parameter a sprite maybe s and we'll do some stuff in there so don't worry i will come back later for this one the second one will be a private again void so private void um, apply imported audio clip so audio clip from asset bundle and again in parameter it will take some audio clip so oh, audio clip ac and again don't worry i will come back for this one just later don't worry and the last one, something we already implanted in the other uh, video. So it will be again a private void, so private void. And this will be not apply, but instantiate. So instant, uh, instantiate uh, game object. So game object from asset bundle and i think you guessed it in parameter i will take a game object go so this one will be implemented very very quickly so i will make a game object instance geo so instance geo will be equal to <coughs> instantiate and it will instantiate geo and uh, instantiate geo so instantiate geo dot transform dot position will be equal to vector three dot zero so now let's talk about the other two so what i will need to do because i want to apply a sprite uh for, from the asset bundle i will need an image and because i will need also to apply or maybe uh maybe not apply but play uh, yeah maybe play imported audio so I will need to create some variable here. So let's serialize fill. Let's make it private image. So I will need Unity engine.ui. So because I will need using image. So Unity engine.ui like this. And what I want to do, so create an image. Let's call it uh, my image loaded. And uh, in other serialized fields, so let's create another serialized field. Let's call it uh, private. So this one will be an audio sources. So audio sources. And this one, something very easy again. So uh, my audio sources, my audio sources loaded. I will use these two to apply uh, in this function. So in uh, apply imported sprite. So I'll, I will make so my uh, uh, my image dot load dot sprite will be equal to s and uh, my sorry, my image dot load dot type because I want a type will be equal to image dot uh, type dot and we want something simple and last thing we want to do because we won't, don't want to um, deform the image when it's imported what i will need to do so my image again my uh, image loaded dot uh, perspect uh, so uh, per oops oh pre uh, press uh, sorry preserve aspect will be equal to true. So basically this will adapt our image to our, uh, our sprite to our image of uh, the size of the image. And for the audio, something very easy. So my audio clip, so my audio sources dot load dot clip will be equal to my uh, audio clip. So AC 
And because I want to play it, something very easy. So my audio sources dot uh, play. And I just want to play my audio sources. So now we can save this. So right now I just create again three function. In three case, three scenario different. So in um, the case when I load a game object, the case when I import uh, or download um, an audio clip and the other one when I download a sprite. So right now, how can I call this function? So basically I will create so a private uh, void uh, load asset bundle. So load asset bundle. And I will take in parameter again a callback. So a callback with some parameter uh, dynamic and type wanted. Uh, let's call it so something very easy. So callback uh, function. And in second parameter, uh, a string again with the asset bundle name. And basically, uh, by default, it will be like this. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what we need to do something very easy, we just need to make start coroutine. So <clears throat> we'll start our download asset bundle, start coroutine, and we want to start this one with the parameter I put in the other parameter of my loaded asset bundle, so the callback function. And the last one, the asset bundle name. Again, some someone will tell me, yeah, but how we can launch this function? And now I will tell you how we can do this just right now. So right now, let's create the last function. So a private uh, void. So this function will determine uh, what I will need uh, or will need to do in case so if we got a sprite, audio clip, or game object. So let's call this one action uh, wanted to asset uh, bundled load and again this one will take in parameter a dynamic uh, d for example and uh, or maybe um, asset uh, download and in other parameters so type wanted and let's call it type uh, wanted so we'll make a switch on the type wanted, something very, very, very easy. And so I will make a switch like this. Okay, so on the type wanted, we got the unknown, we got the game object, we got the texture 2D and the audio clip. So in the unknown, something very easy, we'll just make a debug, uh, so sorry, debug.log. Uh, we don't know, we don't know uh, the type, the type of the asset bundle, make sure to create a case, create a case like this. In the game object, I think you guessed it, we will, we will, um, we will call our function instantiate game object from asset bundle. And it will take in parameter the dynamic, so the asset downloaded. And to make sure this will work, we will cast it as a game object. Remember on the other video, if I head back to our previous um, script like this, we cast our asset bundle here, but because we would to know uh, it was a game object, but right now, because we don't know what is it, and this is why we make a break, uh, we, we make a switch. So this one will be a game object. So for the texture 2D, so we'll use this one. Don't worry for this one. Uh, I'll make sure to, to use the right thing, but right now let's put it on the standby. So I will put asset download as sprite but don't uh, this will not work but don't worry we'll fix that right away and uh, the last one for the audio clip so the audio clip something very uh, easy so play like this and we'll call play 
uh, so again asset bundle so sorry asset download as so audio clip so these three things will be cast for calling the function uh, two more things to do and after we'll done I know it's a lot so this is why I telling you it's an advanced one because there are a lot of stuff so um, last thing we need to do we need to call our load asset bundle so for the example I will just call it in the start function so what I will do so I will make a load asset bundle and in the load asset bundle, as you can see, it will ask a callback with dynamic and type wanted. Something very nice because in the action wanted, it will take in parameter asset download and type wanted. So I will put this in this parameter. And the second parameter is the asset bundle name. Again, if you use a server and you want some specify uh, game object you want to use, use this line, uh, use this uh, line. And you can put, I don't know, maybe uh, my sprite, uh, my game object, or whatever you want. But because, again, I'm not using something dedicated like that, I will not use this parameter. And I will just need to call load asset bundle wanted. So I will save this. And now let's understand how this um, code is working. So in the start function, I will call my load asset bundle and the load asset bundle will call our function action wanted. So again, in my load asset bundle here, he will start the coroutine with the callback. So this one will be waiting. So the load asset bundle is called and the start coroutine is um, starting. So we call the coroutine and it will make all the code, blah, 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 like this, like this. And at the end, the callback function is written to be called in the back way. So we wait for the callback to be filled. So after the callback is filled, this callback will be returning the callback here. So again, here. And this callback will return this callback here. And after it will fill all the field we wanted, the action wanted is called at the end of the coroutine. I hope I make it clear. I know it's a kind of strange to understand, but it is a very powerful tool to make this sync work. And that will be the end of part two of this video. Thanks for watching. So if content equal equal to like or user learned something equal to true, user should thumb up plus subscribe. Else, user should dislike, but help me to improve. Thank you, and I'll catch you guys next time.